Welcome everyone to this Virak and Jeb have fun with rockets episode. Now we haven't done one of those for a while. And in this episode I thought I'd try a challenge that the old gaming geezer was trying. Now in his series A Wing and a Prayer he is getting to the Mun in career mode using just the runway. So no rockets launch from the launch pad. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing in this episode because it's far too difficult. But I would like to have a go at one specific challenge, which is getting a rocket plane to orbit. So let's go into the space plane hangar and have a look at the uh, the gizmos and the thingamidoodars that Jeb and I managed to lash together to complete that mini challenge. Now what we have in front of us here is the old gaming geezer Mark V. So I've gone through a few iterations to get to this particular model. Now although I am in a sandbox game here, I have only used very basic parts uh, from the early parts of the tech tree to complete this challenge. So there should be very very similar parts to that the old gaming geezer was using. So to begin with, we have the payload that I am going to deliver into orbit. So that's going to be uh, this particular part. So if we just uh, bring up the wheel there, that is the, uh, the section that we're actually going to deliver up to Apoapsis and then into orbit. Now there's no science as part of this craft, so I won't be getting much science from this challenge. But uh, if I were, I would be completing the contract for First Orbit, so that's the, uh, the specific challenge that we are after. Now, the launch stage itself is this section here, which consists of four of these FLT-400 fuel tanks, and a number of wing sections. Now, some of you will say that I have cheated because I am using clipping to squeeze together more of these wing connector type bees than might be practical in a non-cheaty environment. But what the heck, who said we couldn't cheat? Now we have some elevons here to deal with roll attached to the back of the wings and then we have four of these J33 Weasley basic jet engines. Now I think the old gaming geezer only had two, but we're going to use four. Uh, once we have got up to 10 or 12,000 meters, we will use the LVT45 swivel engine to complete the rest of our brute force and ignorance uh, ascension. Now attached to the engines we have these uh, Delta Gelux winglets which are one of the earlier winglets that you get in the game and all of those units are attached if you look very very closely to radial decouplers you can just see the radial decouplers in there so we are going to discard the back section here or at least most of the back section as part of the ascent and I've also crammed on one extra pair of these radial air intakes just to cram in a little bit more air to just give us a little bit more altitude as part of our uh, ascension. Now I'm not going to discard the wings. Uh, so uh, the wings will be staying on, the tail fins will go but the wings will be staying on. Um, and they will be jettisoned along with the fuel tanks when we reach the appropriate altitude. So, with all of that said, let's get our uh, let's get our wheels deployed and get ourselves out onto the runway and see how this craft flies. Now, of course, in sandbox mode, we get ourselves a fully upgraded runway. But just one upgrade on the runway would turn it from a dirt track into a tarmac lane. So uh, not that much of an advantage in sandbox mode. But let us get uh, the uh, engines on. Let's get the throttle up to maximum, release the brakes and see how it does. Uh, Jeb is in the pilot seat. He will be taking us on this flight. Let us get the SAS on as we accelerate down the runway. Still a little bit bumpy, even if it is fully upgraded. But notice we have now taken off with absolutely no assistance from Jeb whatsoever. 
Uh, we've got plenty of lift in this vehicle. Now, one of the things I've found, and I don't know why, I find it in a lot of rockets as well, they too tend to veer off to one side, and I have no idea why. There's nothing obvious about this craft that is lopsided. Um, the wheels are uh, in position uh, equally on either side of the vessel. Um, although we do have this single uh, Kerbal engineering system, that's centrally mounted. So I'm not actually sure why it swerves off, just very slightly, but it does. A lot of my rockets turn south. This one's uh, not quite as bad as the rockets that I have, but um, yeah, there we go. Anyway, we're going up quite steep. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on our air intake. Uh, we can also see from the colour of the uh, flames there, the exhaust gases, that uh, we're doing quite all right. But as they start to fade, as the air intake goes down, you'll notice our speed is dropping quite considerably. And again, one of the problems I've had with testing this vehicle is it's a bit squirrely, uh, and um, it does tend to nose down. So uh, that does tend to be the problem, keeping its nose up. Uh, so we tend to have a very, very shallow ascent. So I'm uh, pulling back on the stick. You can see I'm pulling back on the stick as much as possible, but uh, nothing's really pulling the nose up. But we'll let it get down to about 150. Then we will fire the engine. And then we will separate. So let's see how we do. We have a very, very shallow angle. No amount of pulling back on the stick is getting us to rise up off that angle. Even though we've got the uh, LVT-45 uh, swivel engine still having a hard time getting it up now I'm assuming <laughs> you see what I did there yeah uh, now I'm assuming the wings are probably not helping but as we get a little bit further out of the atmosphere we are starting to be able to get up towards that normal 90 degree angle but we are going to have a bit of an inclination. I'm not too fussed about inclination because all we are trying to do in this example is get ourselves up into an orbit to complete that world firsts orbit contract. So inclination is not something I am too worried about. Uh, we still have uh, about a 90 degree angle, which is what we would traditionally have in an old world style ascent. We're up to 41 kilometers, so we're doing pretty good now, now that we're out of the thicker part of the atmosphere. Not touching any of the controls just now, just letting it go straight up. So we're up to uh, 60. And when we got up to about 72, 73, there we go, we'll cut the engine, so we should now be in space, so this vehicle would make it to, uh, would at least make it to space for uh, for that purpose of that contract, so the reach space contract. But let's add a manoeuvre and just swing our apoapsis around. Now we're going to be at about 73, so let's just bring that back a little. 94. We'll have to be careful that... Uh, we're ready to launch, uh, I say launch, ready to uh, fire. Now, according to this, we will need a burn of one minute and uh, two. So normally we go on about the 30 something, but the LV909 is not as powerful. So we will go on the 40 something. So let's go. There we are. So. Uh, Let's go back into normal view. Still got a fair bit of fuel in this LV, uh, LVT-45. Hear the music in the background, we are now definitely in space. There we go, so let's jettison the launch stage, the brute force and ignorance launch stage. And just watch 
apoapsis, periapsis, and time to periapsis. So let's just try and keep time to apoapsis about right, about the same, and keep the apoapsis height around about 73. Still got about 400 delta V to go, so we've got plenty of delta V. Let's try not to increase our apoapsis too much. Here we go. Camera's about to swing. There we go. And there we are. We are in orbit using a rocket plane. And we still have, what's that, about a quarter of our tank left. And we're now in orbit. Let's get rid of the manoeuvre node, have a look at our beautiful orbit. What did we get at uh, 86 kilometres to 72? That's a perfectly good orbit. Very steep inclination. Of course, we uh, lost a lot of that inclination, or rather gained a lot of that inclination, because, uh, like I say, a bit squirrely, uh, this rocket plane. It does tend to veer off to one side, and I'm yet to establish why that is. But there you go. The old gaming geezer and I have managed to get into orbit with uh, very low uh, grade parts, very low tech tree parts. I'm sure you will be able to do much, much better without cheating and clipping any of the parts together. So that's your challenge. See if you can do better. Take care. Bye-bye.